Right. Because we've had the issue with trying to put out some money from Mumford on there. Well, and the, the old behind the grill should be behind the emblem. Yeah, the old. That's why I wanted. I'm glad he brought this up because yeah. the technology's changed. Sequoias, some of the old Land Cruisers, uh, the old Avalons, they have a sort of like a fish eye, and mm -hmm. even some of the other Ran X cars, and they typically would be down here. So they're instantly. You see a car in the used car lot, and you see that, and it, it's like a you know a glass, like almost like fog, like like that, but smaller and darkly -like colored, and that's laser. Uh, dynamic laser cruise. Now the new cars, you can instantly tell by the emblem. The Montau Rouge car that's out over there you just came from, this emblem's like plexiglass. It's not 3D like this, it's just smooth across. And the radar is positioned back here. You'll find it on more Avalons, Prius, I think the Land Cruiser, uh, typically your higher end vehicles. Now what does radar cruise do for you? Slows you, so you down. Yeah, some people call it automatic cruise. Uh, I like the name Adapta Cruise. What I found driving it from Houston to here, you know, the you know, freeway system, I, I sit at a 75. Cars are always pulling up in front of you going 70, 65, 80. I don't have to hit my brake. It takes a lot of driver fatigue out. I'm not constantly hitting my brake because there's not a lot of open road, right? Yeah, well, it resumes itself. You don't have right? to do anything unless you're exiting. Yeah, that's why I said it's an automatic. You just set it, and, uh, you know, if you want to accelerate up, you can just tap it. It goes up one mile prior. You can tap set it the distance minute. how far you want to be. Or next year, they're going to do that with the steering, so we don't have to do anything. You can anymore. set the distance, you know, 100, 130, 160. What would you say? I said the next year, they're going to get it with the steering, so we don't have to do anything. Yeah, hey, right. they're working on that. You read that all the time. <laughs> all the time. I mean, they, they're the getting there. The problem there is all the other units in operation don't have it. Because <laughs> if you think about today's technology with GPS, sonar, radar, electric power steering, the cars can drive themselves. They're making rapid investments. What I want to see is the, uh, where it, it parallel parks for you. Well, we got that now. But I haven't ever seen it done. I've heard about it. I've just never actually seen it in action. Yeah, I think that was on I've a Prius, it. maybe. It's uh, on the Prius. You'll see it. But if you're a good parallel parker, you don't need it. But uh, I just wanted to see we it. never have a need to parallel park. <laughs> Lane departure alert. That's a picture of it. It doesn't have it here, but it physically takes pictures of the stripes on the road. And so if you start drifting out of the road, it allows allow audible beep. So this sort of replaces my wife. So, <laughs> so when she's not there now, I got this. Is it loud enough to wake you up if you fall asleep with the wheel? Yes, it's loud. Well, you know, the Highlander's so quiet that my wife was complaining the blinker's loud on the car. And it, it does sound loud because the car is quiet, it's quiet for a cabin being this big. Now, what I did discover, because I got annoyed with the lane keep assist because she wasn't in the car, evidently she was right. I, I probably do need to stay in my lane a lot more. So this does work. What I really find is that, you know, you're on a freeway and you got a 10 foot wide lane. Um, you got a lot of room to move around. But when you get into some of our cities, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Houston, they start narrowing those lanes down to eight feet so they can squeeze another lane in, right? Where you really need it becomes really annoying, but it's there. So it's a nice, it's a nice feature. It really, I tell you what, it surprised me how often I would drift out of lane. Steering wheel it move really does. or anything? No, it's just an audible beat. What you made me think is like a Prius, it's laying keep assist, and then it integrates the electric power steering to that. And then when you start drifting out, if you're not using the blinker, it actually starts uh, vibrating a little bit to get you back. And it keeps you more in the center of the lane. Okay. That's, a, that's a superior system to, to this. It's just a, a departure alert warning. And then Safety Connect is what? Um, like an emergency only OnStar type of thing. Yeah, GM did an incredible job with OnStar. If you say OnStar, everybody knows what you're talking about, don't they? Mm -hmm. They spend billions of dollars doing that, but it's crazy. Saves about a ton of money with insurance, too. Yeah, and, but ours isn't quite an OnStar system. Ours is a lot more basic in there. We, we do four things, and what are the four things? Roadside assist. Roadside assist. And, uh, if there's an accident, it automatically alerts. Automatic notification of the airbags go out. Yeah, the SOS button where you The 911. And then... Uh, Stolen. Stolen vehicle. Yep. Stolen vehicle. So that's your features right there. And the pre-collision system does what? It actually will pre-apply pre the brakes if it knows you are going to get into an accident or the chances are highly likely of getting in an accident. Right. It's either going to prep the brakes for full brake pressure like what brake assist would do. Right. 
or actually use the brake assist to bring that. Yeah, or if it's going to hit, it will pre-apply the brakes yeah, it uses that right radar, away. When you have radar cruise, it's the same thing. Yeah. Uh, it uses that. It, it can read up to 500 feet, and basically it's going to read. If, if I'm driving 80 and you're driving 70, I know you're going 70 because it's going to slow me down to 70. And it's always on. You can cut it off. You know how to cut it off? Do the... It's got a little oh. button in there. It just says PCS. You can push the button off, cut it off. Why would I ever want to cut it off? Sometimes if you're in the city, it can be too much. Bumper to bumper traffic? Well, it's not going to work <laughs> if you're like under 10 miles an hour. Oh, okay. But uh, Like you if, say, it. you're going through Houston. Some parts of Houston gets pretty pretty solid with traffic. Doesn't it kind of interfere with... Well, a lot of it's structures. can pick up structures like the old trestle bridges. Mm. That the, the, oh. you know, the structure's about, it picks up that metal and says there's something there. Or you're going in a countryside that has a lot of cliffs, trees, and it's winding road, it's going to pick up all that. So you, you're going to have to cut that off. Cause Tennessee it's is not a good place to use it, though. What's that? Tennessee is not Probably a good not. place to use it. And even on my drive up here, I was driving, and the car in the left hand lane, the fast lane, was driving like 60, and there's 18 wheeler on the right hand road. And I had just a little bit, I had enough about three car length that if I drive, scoot up on that car, I could get around and go. Pre-collision system, as I moved up to that car really quick, this car here started beeping. The uh, multi-information system came on, ran, it said brake, brake, brake. And I cut it over to the right real quick. And then of course all systems died down because the radar was picking up a clear view. And that's basically what it's doing. So it detects if you're gonna hit something in order to do that, you get the auto, loud audible beep. Uh, then you're going to feel the car decelerating. And then if it's if you're accelerating too quick, you're going to hit that. And it physically will start pulling back on the the uh, seatbelt in order to get you ready for a collision. Is that pre-collision system standard on all the Highlanders? No, it's a part of that uh, advanced advanced technology but, package. Yeah. So if you was drunk and all this stuff was happening, you old drunk. Well, why why are you <laughs> driving drunk? And then you got you got your, high, you got your auto high beam, and your auto high beam, the way you work that, we all know how to put our high beams on, right? Put the stock all the way back. There's a button over here on the left-hand side in the advanced technology package, and it just says auto with the high beam symbol on it. It doesn't have a light to tell you if it's in and out, but when you push it in, when your blue light comes on your dash, just to the right of there, there's another symbol, and it has a headlamp beam, and it says auto. And when you do that, it's now engaged in auto high beam. So when you're driving down the road, the high beam stay on bright until you come up to like a street light or a car starts approaching you from head on. And I even had to go off, even off of a uh, the speed limit sign. Because the high beam reflected, cut it back down. So I found it sort of sensitive, but it works very well. Okay. So that's all your driver technology package. Hill start assist, of course, you probably should be used to that. You know, keep prevent your road down on the hills. We don't have any hills in our area. And then we go to passive. You got eight airbags, driver's knee airbag, passenger seat cushion airbag. And then we have ELR, ALR seats. And that's where your mercy locker retractors that you have, you know, total comfort, right? You slow down or stop, it locks up. Now, what is automatic locker retractor? You can adjust where you want it to lock into place. Yeah, you pull it all the way out. And it's an all seats but the driver's seat, and you're here right your back. So you can lock down your cargo or a child booster seat or any of those features. You can lock that down. Now, that's been on our car since like 95. So that's another feature there. Just miserable if you're a big, big person and you got to get it all the way out to clip it. And then they get locked in there and they start and complaining and cursing because they can't quite get a time bump. I mean, it's kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've had it happen a few times. So I, I was trying not to laugh at the people. <laughs> And what's wheel seats? A whiplash injury lessening seats. Yeah, and that's a new type of seat system that we have. And then pretensures are force limiters. Pretensures are an event that you, in an accident that is severe enough that it lets off the airbag, the seatbelt physically will start to retract to get you lined up for the airbag. And then once you hit that object, you have a force limiter to allow your body to release. So all that energy is going to go through the path of least resistance, which is the passengers. So they do everything to protect that passenger inside. Here again, that customer retention. So we talked about a lot of safety features today, right? The last 30 minutes that you can use. And we also just recently, they announced that the new Highlander is a top pick. 
for the National Highway Institute uh, for 2014 due to the strength and beat pillar, the roof, and all the door beams. Okay? Am I out of town, time, or do I have any more minutes? I'm not listening to me. Any questions for me? Am I out of town, time? Yeah, sir. Okay, I'm out. Thank you.